Speaking of the body, Patty Crane. Patty Crane was the fight director at Stratford. Now, you were there the first year that he came over, and he did Henry V with you, is that right? No. Um, we, I was in England at the Royal Shakespeare, and we were doing a Beckett of Ennui, and Peter Coe, who happened to, was going to take over as artistic director of Stratford, Canada, the following year. And he asked me to come back with him and do Macbeth, so I said, yeah, I'd love to do that. <coughs> he said, I've got this fighter um, captain here called Paddy Crane. He's a wonderful duelist, and he's, he's doubled so many people in films. I mean, he's even, I think he even doubled Errol Flynn at one point. Um, and he's, he's, he's great, and he wants to come with us, you know, and he, I want you to meet him, and we'll start learning the duel here, right here in England, before you go, go across. So that's how I met Patty. And so we brought Patty over, really, uh, to, to this country. He, that season, he choreographed the duel for Macbeth with knives. <laughs> I kept cutting myself all the time. And then a marvelous, witty duel for Cyrano in Cyrano de Bergerac, which was the second play. Now, I was supposed to just do Macbeth, and Peter O'Toole was, was going to do Cyrano with Michael Langham directing. Peter was very fond of Michael and vice versa. And, uh, but Peter dropped out because he was doing Lawrence of Arabia in uh, Africa, getting his ass with welts and sores from sitting on that camel bareback. In fact, he came up backstage, so he left. He left. He was supposed to be play the king in Beckett, so he gave. He actually, Peter gave me two roles. Wow. He couldn't play it, so I'd play the king instead. I got wonderful press. We did great success with that piece, and Peter came back from Africa and knocked on my dressing room door, and I had some rather posh people were back there that night. I think, and Peter just walked in and said. Oh, plum, there you are, playing my, my part up there on stage, all in color, so comfortable, while I'm sitting there with my bloody ass in the friggin' desert. And look at it, look at it, I want to show you my ass, and look at it, look what happened. And in front of all these people, he pulled his pants down, and he showed his bum to this group, group of horrified, sort of rather uptight group. That was there. He said, look at it, this is, what, this is what art is, for Christ's sake. And this welting, horrible sort of kind of scars, runnings of scars, <laughs> was the most revolting. They all left. They just said, well, it's so nice to see you, Chris. Bye-bye. <laughs> and they all left. And of course, we fell about and we went and got drunk. Um, same thing with Cyrano. He couldn't make Cyrano either because if you're in a David Lean picture, that's 20, 25 years. <laughs> you better give up any, any thought of doing anything else in your life. And, um, so I got Cyrano. So he, he was Peter, Peter O'Toole's gift, those two parts. So that was a wonderful summer playing, playing with Paddy Crane. Was Paddy in it? Yeah, I think Paddy was in one of the, one of the things. He, he wasn't the other uh, duelist, but I think he played small part. So and the fight in Cyrano, did that take uh, a long time to learn, the, the fight with the verse? It, it, <coughs> no, because he did it. So isn't it wonderful when something is so well done and, yeah. and so clear and witty. It's, it's, it's easy as pie. It took no time because it was such fun to do it. You didn't have any trouble learning it, you know. Now that was, uh, that was a lovely summer. Do you remember the fight with Mac in Macbeth? You said it was with, you had a fight with daggers. Yes. <coughs> and with Macduff at the end, was that daggers? Was, that was the dagger fight. It was a dagger and, and broadsword. Right. But they, then at one point we throw the broadswords away and we only use the knives. I don't think we did it very well. It was very difficult to do. Knife fighting is not easy. Yeah. And particularly on that stage at Stratford, which is so naked, and you can't hide, you know, so it has to look awfully real. So we, Bruno, Bruno Jerusalem who played Macduff, and I tried to finish each other off as quickly as possible so we wouldn't go. Um, it wasn't a case of, you've got to lose. It wasn't one of those. <laughs> it, it was a case of, uh, 
Yeah, we, we're actually seeing the, uh, we're seeing the seams. We <laughs> Have you ever been? frozen up in a fight? Yeah, and not me, uh, fortunately, but um, in Richard III, when I was playing it at the Royal Shakespeare in Stratford-on-Avon, uh, Brian Murray was Richmond, and he, and he suddenly froze uh, in the middle of our duel. And I, in that one, John Barton, uh, who was Peter Hall's partner, had devised a, on the left arm, the withered arm, he would use, he would tie a great ball and chain to it because Richard couldn't use the withered arm for anything, so, but he could use his shoulder <laughs> and lurch out and then the ball and chain would come around. And on this right hand was a broad, big broadsword. God almighty, you had to be in good shape to play that part. And suddenly one night, Brian froze in the duel. This is you as Richard with the ball and chain on your... And the big broadsword and Brian, my opponent, <laughs> who's supposed to kill me. He froze. I mean, he just, I, I just, so I had to improvise as quickly as I could and get, get up close to him and I get up very close to him and I'd say, kill me, you fool, <laughs> kill me now. And so it, I tried to make it look like he'd suddenly drawn his sword and I'd run into it. Uh, it was so awful. But the poor guy, he was a, he's a terrific actor and he was very good at it. He just lost the count and froze. And I realized that in my sl slashings with my sword, I caught him up in, above the eye and his, the blood just spurted out of it. I'd have to die it, we, underneath all the hot lights so you, <laughs> you can never, <laughs> your, your, your body is heaving up and down because you can't possibly hold your breath. Um, and I'm dying, I'm trying to look up with one of my dead eyes to see it. if I didn't go straight into his eyeball. I mean, I thought, my God, what have I done? And Dame Edith Evans, who was playing Mad Margaret, came on for the curtain call. We all came on this bloody stage, and she was tripping over it like the sort of Lady Bracknell on Bosworth Field. <laughs> it's a wonderful image. She's tripping over all the blood as she came on for her curtain call, and she'd said, whispered in my ear, rather over keen, were you tonight? 